Shalom, all praise to Yahweh, Shem Yahushah. Double line to the Apostles, dear Masters. I'm now Allah coming to you the video. In this video, I'm going to be focusing on the book of Revelation, chapter 10, verse 8. Well, Revelation, chapter 10, verse uh, 10. I'm going to start from verse 8. It says, In the voice, this is John the Revelator speaking. In the voice which I heard from heaven speak unto me again, it said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and the earth. So he said, go and take this little book, right? From this angel, which that book represented the Bible. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, give me the little book. And he said unto me, take it and eat it up. So the angel said to John, take this book and eat it up. It literally means to take the book and eat it like you would eat the actual food. Take it and eat it up meaning to consume it. Not consume it physically by actual eating, but to consume it spiritually, to consume it with your mind, to take the words that are within this book and consume it, to accept it, to learn it. Let it be one with you. All right? Take it and eat it up. I mean, you consume this word. Take heed to this word. Understand this word. And it shall make, it's like the term um, food for thought. Food for thought, you don't actually take food and make you and eat it and make you smarter. Food for thought is knowledge that's given to your mind. So take this book and eat it up. I Meaning take the knowledge that's within this book within this book and consume it with your mind. Learn it. And eat it up. Take it and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter. So I said, take it and eat it up, and it's gonna make your belly bitter. So these words are gonna make your belly bitter. Look at the word bitter. Definitions from um, Merriam Webster. It says definition of bitter it gives various definitions. Let's go to the point. It says be distasteful or distressing to the mind. Like if a person is bitter, a person feels distasteful about something. A person minds feel distressed. Marked by intensity or severity, accompanied by severe pain or suffering. But the main point is distasteful and distressing to the mind. Okay? And even if you read up, it tells you um uh, being inducing or mocked by the by one of the five basic taste sen sensations that is peculiarly um, ascrid, astringent. In other words, it's referring something to bitter in regards to taste. We got over that already in the second definition. So it says distasteful or distressing to the mind. If you eat something that's bitter, that means it's, dis it's distasteful. If a person is feeling bitter, that means their mind is um, distressed. So let's go back. So let's go back. It says. Revelation 10 and 9, and I went unto the angel and said unto him, give me the little book. And he said unto me, take it and eat it up. Take this book, take the words in this book and eat it up. Consume it, devour with your mind, learn it. And it shall make thy belly bitter. Now, if we know to, um, to eat up the book means to learn it and you learn something with your mind, how can it, why would something that's put into your mind make your belly bitter, your actual stomach bitter? It's not too much making your actual belly bitter, it's too much making your mind bitter. Because if you take the word and you eat it up and you learn it, you feel bitter as in distressed in the mind because you understand the truth about the world, the truth about your condition. You understand that the world that we live in is not a world that upholds the Lord's and commandments of the Heavenly Father and that distresses your mind. It distresses your mind, your mind because you know that the righteousness of the Heavenly Father is not being upheld in the world. You know that you're an Israelite and being that you're an Israelite, the so-called Negro Latinos, Native Americans, you understand that being an Israelite, you are in the predicament that you are in due to the um, sins that your fathers committed. That's why we're in a slavery. That's why Christopher Columbus, Ponce de Leon, Vasco da Gama, and all of the conquistadors, the Spaniards came to the side of the world. That's why they made them rape, rob, and murder, and slaughter the indigenous people of Central South America in the Caribbean islands. That's why that you had the Hernan Cortez and various other Spaniards who did these things, who went to Mexico. And they slaughtered, and they slaughtered the, uh, the uh, people of the various Caribbean islands and Central South America, people of Mexico, the because the Aztecs, the Mayans, they slaughtered them and enslaved them and stole their riches. That all happened because we sinned against the Lord. That's why the North American Indian and the Seminole Indians um, were slaughtered by the United States government. The Sand Creek Massacre, the Massacre of Wounded Leader, Trail of Tears, the Indian Removal Act. That's why all the things occurred to us, slavery. That's why we're in the prison system. We're getting gunned down by the police, all because of the sins that we committed. And, you, and that caused you, your mind to feel bitter. But quick scripture. Ecclesiastes 1 and 18. For much wisdom is much grief. And he that increases in knowledge increases in sorrow. That's why it's going to make your belly bitter. Your mind bitter. Because in much wisdom is much grief. The more wisdom you gain, the more grief you're going to feel. Because when you gain wisdom, you're gaining knowledge. You're gaining understanding. And gaining wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and learning the truth 
you begin to feel grief by people. You begin to feel grief. It's like when you have a certain understanding of something and someone else doesn't understand it. You feel grief. You feel grief because it's like no one else understands it. No one else gets this. No one else can see that this is the truth. You feel grief. For a much wisdom is much grief. Because by you understanding the truth about the world, you begin to feel grief. Why? Because the wisdom knowledge of the Heavenly Father is not being upheld in the world that we live in. So you feel grieved. He that increases the knowledge increases the sorrow. When you increase the knowledge, you tend to increase the sorrow. Okay? So he that increases the knowledge increases the sorrow. You gain more knowledge, you begin to feel sorrowful. Because if you gain knowledge about certain things, you begin to feel sorrowful of why these things occur. It's the fact that you have the knowledge and you actually know about it. And you know what's... Um, and that's, this is really talking about in regards to the Bible, of course. But it can apply to other things as well. But it's mainly about the scriptures. You have the knowledge of the scriptures, you begin to feel sorrow. For because um, understanding the wisdom knowledge of the Bible, you understand that the wisdom knowledge of the Bible, the Lord's study and the commandments, the righteousness of the Heavenly Father is not being upheld. For example, you, you have the knowledge of the Lord. You understand about the Heavenly Father and His Son. So how do you feel about a movie that's degraded in the Bible? Bible. You feel sorrowful about that. You feel grieved about that, don't you not? So when you come into this knowledge, you're learning you're an Israelite, and much wisdom, much grief. He that increases the knowledge, increases the sorrow. You gain the knowledge, but then you begin to feel sorrowful because you understand the condition that you're in, and you pray to the Lord, ask the Lord to, to, um, to deliver you. Now we're crying to the Lord, asking now, asking the Heavenly Father to send His Son to deliver us. Only a person has the knowledge of the Lord that understands. That according to the Bible, he's coming back to save his elect. Those will be the people, the ones that are going to be sighing and crying. That's Ezekiel 9 and 4. Those that had the knowledge of the Lord, those are the ones that are going to be sighing and crying for the Lord's return. Why? Because they have knowledge, therefore they increase in sorrow. They have the knowledge of the Lord, they have, they have the knowledge that he's coming back to deliver his people. So guess what? Won't those be the ones that are feeling sorrowful, crying to the Lord? They understand that he's coming back. So they understand it's coming back, they're going to cry unto the Lord and ask him to deliver them. So he that increases the knowledge is going to increase the sorrow. Only those that understand the Lord will do that. That's why Ezekiel 9 and 4 says, Place a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. That mark means to be exempt from judgment. Place a mark or an exemption from judgment upon the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. So all the abomination that's done, if you're sighing and crying for it, guess what? The Lord's going to mark you. He's going to cause you to mark you to be exempt from judgment. You aren't going to be judged. You aren't going to be punished. That's in Ezekiel 9 and 4. Ezekiel 9 and 4. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Got that word mark. Tha wa. Tha wa. That's a tha on the right, and that's a wa on the left. Hebrew, read right to left. Desire mark, mark as a sign of exemption from judgment. So those that are signed and crying for the abomination that be done in the midst of wrath, a mark is set upon them. They're going to be exempt from judgment. Why? Because they have taken that little book, they've eaten it, and then their belly has become bitter. They feel the bitterness of, or the stress of mind. Because they're signed and crying for the abomination that is done in the midst of wrath. Let's go to the next scripture. Back in Ezekiel 9, back in Ezekiel 10, and, I'm sorry, Revelation 10 and 9. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book, which is the Bible. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up. Take this book and eat it up. Not consume it with your mouth, but consume it with your mind. Learn this book. Understand it. And it shall make thy belly bitter. Meaning it's going to make your mind bitter. It's going to make your mind feel distressed. Okay, it's going to make you feel distasteful in the mind. Because by understanding the word, you begin to become distressed for all of the abominations that have been done in the world. For all the abominations that's done in the world. And for all those things that are occurring in the world that are that are uh, transgressing the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father. Alright? Those that don't um, acknowledge the Son as being the Heavenly Father. You feel, your mind feel bitter about that. But it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. But the word is going to be sweet in your mouth. Like honey. Like when you eat something and it feels sweet in your mouth. The word is going to be sweet in your mouth like honey. Because the word is being compared to honey. So when you eat this word and it's like honey. It's sweet unto you. You learn you're an Israelite. You learn that the Heavenly Father and the Son are black men. The Lord's coming to deliver the children of Israel, which are your so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. You learn these different things. And it feels sweet. You got, you got another scripture. Isaiah 19 and 10. The more to be, it says, Isaiah 19 and 9. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, they than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey, 
and the honeycomb. So it says, the judgments of the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yashah, are true and righteous together, all together. More to be desired than gold. So the judgments of the Lord are more to be desired than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey, and the honeycomb. So the word of the Lord, the righteousness of the Lord, the judgments of the Lord are sweeter than the honeycomb. Sweeter than honey and honeycomb. The, the word, the righteousness of the Lord, the judgments of the Lord being compared to something being sweet. Look at another scripture. This is the book of uh, Psalms, chapter 119, verse 103. How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. So the words of the Lord are sweet. They're sweet to the, they're sweet to the taste. Sweeter than honey in, in your mouth. That precepts are given understanding, therefore I hate every false way. It's the precepts talking about the words of the scriptures. The, 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 the lines in these scriptures, the verses in these scriptures, those are, those are the precepts. This is Revelation 10 and 10. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey, so the world was sweet when he got it. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. So as soon as he ate the word, his belly got bitter. So as soon as he truly learned about the wisdom, knowledge, understanding, he started to already feel bitter. He started to feel bitter. Because that's what happened. That's the bitterness of the word. You know? There's a lot of things in the Bible that people can't really get with that upsets people's stomach, if you will. That makes their stomach turn, if you will. But when it's, when, if, somebody, if, if somebody says, you know, you make my stomach turn, they don't literally make your stomach turn. You didn't eat something to make your stomach hurt. Something about them disgusts you. Something about them, about them is distasteful. So there's certain things in the scriptures that people find distasteful. And it causes them to become bitter. But not bitter in their belly, but rather bitter in their mind. Or more scripture. This is the book of our, uh, Pro, uh, Psalm, Proverbs 25 and 16. Has thou found honey? Eat so much as is sufficient for thee, that thou be filled with, it with and vomiting. Now, if you look at it from a literal sense, if you find honey, eat as much as sufficient for you, as much that's a, that's enough to satisfy you. Let's thou be filled there with. If you eat too much, you're gonna vomit it because honey is a natural laxative. If you actually eat too much honey, it can cause you to feel nausea. It can actually cause you to throw it up, to vomit it up. It makes your belly feel bitter, feel bitter, and it causes you to actually vomit it up. All right. But the word is compared to honey. So you look at it from a spiritual aspect, it says, has I found honey? Eat so much is sufficient for you. I mean, it has to have gotten the word. Take it as much of the word that's sufficient for you, that's enough for you. All right. In other words, when you get into the knowledge of the scriptures, you're not supposed to go around trying to go into different doctrines. You're not supposed to go around trying to seek levels of understanding that's too deep for you. Because what happens when people get into the Bible and they think that they know everything? They think that um, the Spirit of the Lord is working with them and the Spirit of the Lord isn't. They look at the scriptures and they start breaking scriptures down wrong. They start adding their own information in there. They start twisting and turning the scriptures and breaking the scriptures down wrong, claiming that the Most High, the Heavenly Father, and the Son is showing them things in the scriptures that aren't even there. So when you're taking the scriptures, you gotta eat so much that's sufficient for you. All right? You can't go into the scriptures and try to teach your own thing. You gotta teach the scriptures in accordance to how that scripture is supposed to be taught. In accordance to how the scripture is supposed to be taught. Why? Why is that? Let's not be filled there with vomit. So if you take knowledge that's above your understanding, eventually you're gonna vomit it up. So it'll cause you to uh, you get an upset stomach and you go vomit the scriptures up. But not upset stomach physically, but up your stomach figuratively, meaning your mind. Your mind's going to feel bitter. You're going to vomit everything up. So you got people out there that take in these words, this word which is compared to honey. They get filled with it. So take the word, they get filled with the word, and eventually they vomit the word up. Because they took the knowledge of the Lord and they started to teach things the way they wanted to teach things. They started to teach things opposite of how the scriptures are supposed to be taught. And then what happened? They vomited it up. Eventually they discard the Bible. They start to err in the eyes of the Lord. And they what? Abandon the truth. They vomited it up. So that I'm going to close until I pray to God about Shemar Shah, the Blancs, the Apostles, the GMS. Only brother, learn something, inshallah.